Now at five, an Uber passenger is dead and other drivers are in the hospital after a multi-vehicle crash in Northeast Portland. How police say a stolen truck played a role. Plus, I started to flip flop back and forth thinking, well, I'm comfortable with this. Now I'm not comfortable with this. I'm comfortable with this. I'm not neighbors, comfortable with this. Neighbors pushing back against a possible plan to move a homeless village onto a church's empty lot in North Portland. Why some say their problem has to do with schools. And a group of demonstrators have blocked the tracks at the Zenith Energy Plant with a garden. Their message to city leaders as your News at 5 starts now. This is KGW News at 5. Good evening, though, our top story. We are just an hour and a half away from tip-off, and as you can bet, Blazers fans are already getting excited for tonight's playoff game, this fan included. It's a game of four, game four of the series in Oklahoma City. Thank you again for joining us. I'm Maggie Vespa. KGW's Lindsay Nadrich is live in Beaverton, where fans are starting to show up to watch tonight's big game. Hey, Lindsay. Yeah, hey, Maggie, I'm here at Buffalo Wild Wings in Beaverton. Like you said, game's an hour and a half away, and it is Easter, so it still looks a little empty in here right now, but staff are expecting a packed house for the game. They said the last two games, it was completely full. Other sports bars in the area I checked with said the same. One told me they had standing room only. That's why one family I spoke with got here early to snag a table. They said it's been awesome to watch the Blazers in the playoffs. Uh, super exciting. I know we lost the last one, but um, I'm hoping that we're going to win this one and go all the way. Go Blazers! When the Blazers played here at home in the Moda Center in Game 2, you could feel the excitement. The crowd was loud and pumped up. Tonight, although many fans won't be able to watch them play in person, plenty plan to flock to watch parties in the area to cheer on the team. And a lot of people are already expressing their excitement on social media. Check out these tweets. One fan said, Happy Easter to everyone except OKC fans. Just kidding. Jesus loves and died even for OKC fans. Another fan wrote, I just need my trail Blazers to take care of business tonight, hashtag Rip City. Kimberly at Grand Canyon tweeted, she said, let's get this one tonight, hashtag Rip City. And we found one fan who will be at tonight's game. He tweeted, I'll be at game four tonight, cheering y'all on, please win so I don't get roasted at work tomorrow, hashtag Rip City. All right, a lot of people planning to have to watch parties. They are expecting a full house here. People want to get together to cheer on the team and hope they take it all the way. Back to you, Maggie. Yeah, fingers tightly crossed at this point. Lindsay Nadrich live for us. Lindsay, thank you and have fun. And hey, game four starts at 6.30. KGW's Orlando Sanchez will have a preview of all the action in Oklahoma City coming up later on in sports. Switching gears now, though, to a developing story out of Marion County. Deputies are investigating what they call a suspicious death there. They say they were called out to a house on Twin Creeks Lane last night around 11 for a possible assault. This is a rural area north of Jefferson, and when they got there, they found the body of a 55 year old woman. Her cause of death has not yet been determined, but deputies say this is an active investigation. They also say they don't believe there is any danger to the public. New information on a fatal crash that involved multiple cars and shut down 102nd Avenue in Northeast Portland last night. We have now learned the man who was killed was an Uber passenger. This happened around 1130 on the overpass above I-84. Police say the driver of a pickup truck was going about 100 miles per hour when he swerved over the center median and hit an SUV head on. It turns out that SUV at the time was being used as an Uber. It then hit the minivan. Police say the passenger of the Uber was not wearing a seatbelt and that passenger was injected through the windshield and died. The Uber driver was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. Officers say the two other drivers involved had non life threatening injuries and police say the driver of the pickup was intoxicated and the truck was stolen. We are still waiting to hear about any possible charges. In Washington County, four teenagers were hurt in a crash overnight. This happened on Tile Flat Road and Grabhorn Road around 1230. Deputies say the driver of a Toyota lost control and crashed head on with an Audi. The four teenagers were riding in that Audi and three of them had to be extricated. They were all taken to the hospital. We don't know the extent of their injuries. Deputies also say they do not think speed or alcohol were factors in that crash. 
Well, now to Portland's homeless crisis and the question of what to do with this empty lot right here in St. John's. Right now, a church owns it, and they voted to lease it to the city and county so possibly a homeless village can move here. When we first reported this story, neighbors I talked to were open about the idea but said they wanted to know more. Well, since then, a handful of others have reached out with a different reaction. KGW first broke this story about a week ago, hearing from the senior pastor at St. John's Christian Church. They don't have places to sleep. They don't have um, uh, places to go at night. Days prior, parishioners had voted to let the city and county lease the church's lot across the street to house people from this camp, Hazelnut Grove. It sat in North Portland for years. The city and county have been wanting to move it for a long time. And while nothing's been decided, they like this option. When our story first aired, neighbors were just learning about this and said they wanted to know more. Several neighbors within a block or so of the site were given a handout. We found it in our mailbox. Since then, this group has reached out eager to speak up. I started to flip flop back and forth thinking, well, I'm comfortable with this. Now I'm not comfortable with this. I'm comfortable with this. I'm not comfortable with this. These people live around here and they're not happy about this potential move for a number of reasons. We already have on the street a number of people that this is their home. They have to live in these campers. Um, they try to stick to themselves, um, but we would undoubtedly in this massive field that they're proposing have more unsanctioned campers that would come. Our city continues to want to put a Band-Aid on this problem instead of developing affordable housing options for these people. Where are they going to transition to? Another camp isn't going to help. They also point out there's a grade school and a Montessori school within two blocks of here. City and county reps told KGW last week they're taking these concerns into consideration. Adding any decision and move will take several months. In the meantime, they point out the village wouldn't look like this, but like this. This is video of the Kenton Women's Village. It's run by staff at Catholic Charities, and it's placed dozens of women into permanent housing. The plan is to have Hazelnut Grove's new site, whether it's here or not, be run by Do Good Multnomah, a nonprofit that currently runs villages for homeless veterans. People here still feel worried and blindsided. The most troublesome part was not being uh, consulted or included in the conversation. We're being brought in after the fact. When I reached out to the church, they told me it was a done deal. Uh, they had not signed anything yet, they, so there is some hope, and I encourage people to come to the meeting on the 23rd. It may be our only chance to have our voices heard. All right, so if you're thinking, what meeting? He's talking about an informational meeting where people can ask questions and learn more about this, again, potential plan. It's being held at St. John's Christian Church on Tuesday, April 23rd. It's set to start at 6.30. And reps for the Joint Office of Homeless Services tell us they've also heard from neighbors and businesses nearby who are in favor of this plan. They're asking everyone, no matter your opinion at this point, to come to that meeting. All are welcome. Well, moving on tonight, protesters have blocked the train tracks at the Zenith Energy Plant in northwest Portland. The group Extinction Rebellion is demanding the area be rezoned from an industrial corridor to a green space. The demonstrators say this is to bring attention to the crude oil and fossil fuels brought in and housed at the site, which they say is dangerous to the environment and to the community. The group planted a so-called victory garden over the tracks and even brought in a tiny house there. Protesters say city leaders are not following through with pledges to fight climate change. They seem unable to summon the political courage to use the, the tools they already have to simply act. Um, and that's why we, that's why those of us who are part of Extinction Rebellion have, have you know, gotten together because it is that disconnect between the, what we really need to be happening on climate and what's not happening politically. Police have been at the protests throughout the day, but they haven't broken anything up. We've reached out to Zenith, but have not heard back. And the mayor's office tells us they plan to release a statement on this later today or tomorrow. We'll bring it to you. Well, taking a live look outside today, the rain is holding off this Easter Sunday. It was a nice day out there, but 
Will it stay that way through the work week? The ever important question. Let's go to meteorologist Joe Ranieri, who's in the Weather Center now. Hey, Joe. Hey there, Maggie. Happy Easter to you. We are going to be seeing mainly dry conditions over the next couple of days. With that said, I am tracking a front that's going to be moving on shore as soon as by tomorrow morning, early part of the afternoon. But in terms of rainfall amounts, pretty light, at least for the next 24 hours or so. We're looking at a temperature of 62 degrees. These clouds never really melted off as quickly as we were hoping. So our, our daytime highs were just a little bit cooler from what we are expecting. So it's going to be seeing more clearing here the next couple of hours. Clouds though will be rolling through really after midnight in the early part of Monday morning. And once those clouds increase, they'll bring us a threat of some light sprinkles throughout your morning commute, mainly dry during the daylight hours. That system that I'm tracking will be bringing heavier amounts heading, heading into tomorrow night and especially into Tuesday morning. So as we look at the future cast, we put this into motion early tomorrow morning. There'll be some high clouds out there, but the clouds really start to thick up by 730 8 o'clock tomorrow. You can see by the time that system moves on shore, we are going to be seeing a threat of some light sprinkles, mainly along the Oregon coast. Now, coming up in your detailed forecast, I'll let you know when specifically we'll be seeing more heavier amounts of rain. The good news, though, in your work week forecast, I do have sunny and at least one warm day. Details not coming up. Oh, Joe, that was a good cliffhanger. Thank you. <laughs> I we'll do see. my best. All right, well, well done. We'll see you soon. So oh, it's a very, very sad day for all of us. Changing gears tonight and turning to Sri Lanka, where more than 200 people have been killed at nine bombings at churches, hotels and other sites this Easter Sunday. The State Department says several U.S. citizens are among those killed. Hundreds more have been injured and authorities say these blasts targeted worshipers around the country as they celebrated Easter Mass. Uh, there was a loud explosion. Uh, just just to check, we I climbed up to the rooftop. Uh, at a, about one kilometer away, we could see uh, a smoke, white smoke coming out. So seven suspects have been arrested so far. President Trump tweeted his condolences and offered assistance from the United States. Well, backlash is growing against a Washington lawmaker who angered nurses after saying they probably spend a lot of time playing cards at rural hospitals. State Senator Maureen Walsh made those comments while discussing a bill that would have given nurses meal and rest breaks. She proposed an amendment requiring nurses to work eight hour shifts instead of 12 hours, which ended up passing. Now a petition calling for Walsh to shadow a nurse during a shift has gotten nearly half a million signatures online. A blog for the Washington State Nurses Association criticized Walsh's comments and got so many readers that the website crashed. The Union Gospel Mission is spreading the love this Easter Sunday. Still ahead, how many people, houseless and otherwise, in Portland got served an Easter brunch? That's coming up. That's the best beignet I've ever had in my life. And a new kind of tour is coming to Portland, and that line alone interested me very much. How it involves eating tons of sugary treats after the break.